And we are live. Yay! Hey, I'm EDJ Geek. I am serverless for everyone, as you can see here. I hope that you can uh, you can join us there. I hope you are joining us today as we jump into sessions with Sam. Today, we're going to be covering EventBridge. We're going to be talking all about EventBridge um, and, and really not, not so much all that you can do, but more how do you set it up with Sam because this is the sessions with Sam. So we're talking about how do we set up Sam uh, and how do we set up, uh, or how do we set up EventBridge in SAM? So, all right, looks like we're live. I'm seeing some folks out there, so let's get started here. All right, so bring up our screen. So the first thing here, we're going to start with the SAM template. And here's what we're going to build today. We're going to build. We're going to start with just building an EventBridge, a custom bus. Then we're going to add a lambda. Uh, to to push custom events to that. We're not going to use the SAS uh, instance of that right now, uh, but although that's a heavily used one where you can do a, like, you know, you know, a Zendesk or something like that can push events in. But we're going to show how to use EventBridge as a custom, you know, a message uh, bus for you to use in your applications. So let's get started here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a few globals. Okay. This is my SAM template. And with SAM templates, I can set globals that uh, that could say, okay, everything I'm gonna do in my function for, for different things. So for instance, my function, every function should have a timeout of five. Its code URI should be based in the source folder. And we should have a runtime of node JS 12 point uh, X. So whatever the latest node is. Hey, whoever's saying hi, Sam, how are you? I'm not Sam, but I have worn the same costume. So I guess that's, that's something. So, uh, all right. So as we set these globals up, now we're gonna start building our resources. And, and as I told you before, uh, I have tried to type everything by hand and it turns right there. It turns into a nightmare. So you'll see a lot of copy and pasting here. I fat finger uh, with the best of it. So yeah, uh, yes, there is proof. There's living proof on Twitter, on YouTube that I've worn the costume, so proud. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our custom bus. So let me explain what we're doing here. Doesn't take very much to build it out. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna add a resource and something about SAM templates is they are cloud formation. If we go up here, it is a cloud formation template. It just does a transform, okay? And then we do a description. So anytime we have something like uh, events, this is just a standard uh, cloud formation resource and I can use those. So all I have to pass in is I'm gonna say the logical name is custom bus. I'm gonna say that the um, the type is event, uh, AWS events event bus and I'm gonna give it a property uh, of you know, what I'm gonna call it. Now, if I do event source name, that's gonna be tied back to like, like a SAS thing. So we're not gonna use that right now. So we'll actually just get rid of it for the moment. And then I'm gonna pass the name super bus. That's what I wanna call my custom bus, all right? So this is gonna create a bus, uh, an event bus that, that I can pass messages into and that I can add rules to that can trigger lambdas. So let's see how that works. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build an endpoint, okay? So this endpoint's job, all he's gonna do is we're gonna hit it with, you know, uh, maybe a, a postman or something like that. And we're gonna post information and it's going to handle that for us. So here we go. Let me explain this real quick. This is a Lambda function. You see, this is a serverless, so it's gonna go through a transform. The handler is gonna be endpoint.lambda handler, and it's gonna look in the source folder for that. So if we look here under source, I have an endpoint.js, and in there is a function called Lambda handler. Then I'm gonna add some policies. Now, something I would tell you here uh, real quick is anytime I'm looking at doing policies, I go to this page first, all right? So what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to, and this isn't the page, let me try that again. We go to this page first. These are managed policies for SAM, and a lot of them are already included here. And the idea, you can see a ton of them here. Scroll down through here, and what I can do is I can choose one, and then I can, like, let's look at the DynamoDB one, so CRUD policy. And in that, then I can pass, all right, so it's going to tell me here's what it's going to give, and then it's going to tell me what uh, what uh, re or template I can pass in. So I can pass in a table name to make this work. Okay, so it's, it's very easy for me to say, okay, I'm going to build, you know, I'm gonna pass this policy and a table name. So let's go back to our code here. 
And then this one, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the event bridge put events policy, and I'm going to pass it a parameter of event bus name, which I'm doing a ref to our custom bus. Okay. So what does that give us? That actually uh, ties this into, this allows this function to push events to that bus. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to pass that bus in as a variable in my event uh, parameter. Uh, sorry, in my in my Lambda function. So it will appear as a, as a uh, environment variable so I can use that when I'm pushing it in my code. So let me grab a drink here. If you see my serverless for everyone there, uh, there you go. Uh, I'm all about it. So I do have more shirts than this, just so you know, but I have a lot of these too. So, all right. The last thing we're going to do is what is the uh, events, okay? So, and, and I'm going to grab here... Um, and I think that I accidentally typed something there. So there you go. I shouldn't type. So in the event, I'm going to put an HTTP API using our new HTTP API that we've talked about for the last two weeks. And I'm just going to pass properties uh, of a path and a, and a method. And all we're going to do is post to this. Okay. So with that, now I'm going to I'm going to get my uh, uh, I'm going to turn on my profile that I want to use here. With that, we're going to go ahead and do a SAM deploy. So let me go into that directory real quick here. And I'm working in my event bridge directory. And can someone tell me, is the font big enough? Can everybody see that okay? Uh, and I'll watch for I'll watch for a response. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do SAM deploy. I'm going to do a minus G because this is our first time. So I want to I want to see that uh, I need to set up some parameters. So I'm going to hit that. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to I'm going to scroll this up a little. It's going to ask me for the app name. So we'll just call this EB. OK, it makes it real simple for me. Uh, the next thing is what uh, region am I going to be in? I work in the US West 2 normally. That's where I'm closest to. Uh, and then I'm gonna confirm the changes. Nope, I want to go ahead and do it. And yes, I needed to create the roles and I want to save my information to a configuration. So let's go ahead and deploy. Now, one thing that I want to do real quick that I should have done before we deploy, but that's okay, we can redeploy because it happens pretty quick. Uh-oh, we've got an issue, we've got an error. Okay, custom bus, rollback request about super Oh, yeah, I know, because when I was testing this. All right, so that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop out to our our AWS website. I'm going to pop into my account real quick. And let me pop this up, and we'll just go, we'll sign into the account. I'm going to delete that stack. So when when you get a st stack sometimes stuck in, in rollback, sometimes we need to delete it uh, manually. So we'll go ahead and get rid of it so I can redo this, and we'll change the name. That was my bad. So, all right, let's go to my stacks and we're gonna get rid of EB. And what I should have done is, is we should have refed that so that we can pass in any kind of name we want. But that's all right. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say, we're gonna call this super bus two. Now the nice thing is, is down here, because I'm referencing the name, I don't have to change it everywhere else. So I could, that'll just get passed through to everywhere else that needs it. So we'll just call it super bus two and we'll save that. And I've already saved all my parameters. And now before we deploy, let's go ahead and add the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to add an output so we have our HTTP input. So, so our HTTP URL. So what I can do is I can say, uh, I'm going to do the outputs here and I'm going to get it back to the uh, root. Boy, this is really not having fun. Okay. Working with very large fonts can be tough. All right, so now this is building out. Now notice I'm grabbing serverless HTTP API, but I haven't declared that anywhere. The nice thing about this is if I declare, if I use an event to create an HTTP API, it's going to, that's going to be the name of it. If I create a, if I implicitly declare the, the um, API, then I can use another name. But uh, if, if it's, if it's, in, in, if it's a, uh, set up through an event, then I can grab it through serverless HTTP API and that'll build this out. So let's try this deploy again, see if I, if I can do it. So we don't need the G anymore. We've already passed that. Should see once that's going. Okay, and we'll look over here in our account. That stack is gone. So we'll clear that out here. All right, and there it's creating again. Good. Okay. All right, so we created the custom bus, and that that time it created. Good. So, yeah, you can't have the same name uh, in your custom buses. You, you have to be different names. Uh, so there you go. 
Uh, a lot of times with resources, I tend to let them uh, dynamically be named by cloud formation. So that doesn't happen. So there's just a little tip. Uh, I just wanted to know the name of this one and, and use it. So you can, you can do it either way. All right, any questions while we're going along here? It's a fairly quiet room, that's okay. All right. Okay, so once this is complete, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an output of the URL that we can work with. And we'll grab that here just a second. Okay, so there we go. So here's our output. Now we're gonna do something fun here. All right, I think it's fun. So let me copy this first of all, okay? And we're gonna take it over to Postman, okay? And in Postman, I have, we're just gonna pass some data. I'm gonna get rid of this extraneous data that I added, or spaces. We're gonna pass some data. So now what we're building today is we're gonna build so that we can either translate or get a sentiment on something. So if I wanted to do a translation, here's, you know, here's uh, what we could do. So when we send this, I can send it in, I can say, hey, it's a type translate, and I'm gonna do, here's the data I want to translate, and here's the language I want to translate it to. So now all my input did was say, okay, I got your message, and here's the data that I've got. But we wanna see, we wanna start monitoring this, so I'm gonna show you a little something in SAM local that's very helpful. So first of all, I'm gonna need my function name real quick. So my stack is EB, and my function name is called endpoint function. So let's just copy that real quick here. And I'm going to go over to my terminals, and I've got several set up here, and I'm going to do SAM logs. And actually, we're just going to change this real quick here, because you can see that I've done it already. Uh, okay, endpoint function, and our stack is just called EB. So what this is going to do is it's going to connect, it's going to look at the stack, it's going to grab that function, and it's going to connect to that uh, function and it's going to tail the log on it. Now we have to have run it once, so I already did that, so logs appear. So there we go. So now, and so this is going to pull. So sometimes it won't be immediate, but it'll happen in a few seconds. Now we've got, see we showed here what was sent back to the user. So we have a working example of an API, but we've already done that, not that impressive. What we need to know is what's happening with EventBridge. So let's move on. All right, so here we go. The next thing we're gonna do is going back to EventBridge is we're going to add another resource and we're gonna add, it's gonna be another Lambda, okay? And this is gonna be our translation Lambda. And I'm just gonna copy it in and paste it and then we'll talk through it. Let me get rid of my terminal here. All righty. How are we doing out there? Okay. Now, if you are looking for, uh, I'm gonna post some links here. If you're looking for the policies link, that is here, uh, as well as the, um, when when we do the event bridge, so when we're building out the, the, the source, the event sources, that would be here. So I always look there on how am I gonna structure these? So those become very helpful. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna post a second Lambda here. Now this Lambda, his job, he's gonna get triggered by a specific rule in, um, uh-oh, someone, someone's gonna need to get booted there. Maybe Rob Sutter, you can handle that for me or, or see what's going on there. All right, so what this is gonna do is this is gonna create a rule on building, on, on that, that triggers this Lambda translate function that any time, and I'll explain how the rules are gonna work, uh, it'll get triggered to do a translation. Now, again, we talked through, it's handlers under translate.lambda uh, handler. I'm passing in, I'm gonna use, I need comprehend, and here's why. Translate, if I pass in a language, let's go back to the source that I sent in. Okay, I passed in language ES, but uh, I didn't pass, this is the language I wanna to translate to. We can use comprehend for it detect, to detect what language I'm passing it from. So comprehend will automatically do this. So I need to give it permissions to look at comprehend. I also need to give it an inline permission to do translate text because translate is not a managed uh, policy yet. So the, I built an inline function saying I'm gonna allow this to hit translate text and because it's just one service, I'm just gonna hit that resource. There's not a way to limit that, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an event and it's gonna be the translate filter and the type is an event bridge rule, okay? So there's a couple properties that I'm gonna put in here. Now I can put an input and the input will actually say, well, well I got a certain amount from event, this is what I want you to send to the trigger, okay? So I can actually 
override the event coming into the to uh, the event triggering this and send different data to the Lambda based on what the event says. I can also narrow the event path so I can move into, so if I just want to send a little snippet of the detail, I can do that. But, uh, so then I, I have to declare the event bus name. So it's, it's going to be our ref custom bus and it'll grab the name. Then here's my pattern. Now we're not gonna go really deep into complex patterns. However, um, we've got, I've got one that I'm gonna post here in, in there. That is the event bridge blog that James did. That is a, it, it has a ton of really, it goes deeper into translations and how to build them out. Kind of out of scope for what we're doing here, but to get, to get an idea and you can, that's a great blog and you can do a lot there. So, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to tell it that the source has to be text input. Now let's go to the code so you can see what's going on. Okay, so here is my code. That's this is the input code. Okay, and this is just the model to show here. Hey, what it's going to be, and that's just a reminder for me. I'm grabbing the AWS SDK and I'm and I'm uh, instantiating event bridge. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in. I, I I grab the body. Now the body's going to come in stringified because that's how, how API Gateway works. Okay, so I grab it and I parse it out so I can read it. So event dot body. Then I'm going to look at the params and what I want to do is in the details, I'm going to pass the whole thing. The request data, I'm just going to pass it all in so my downstream functions have the information. I'm also going to give a detail type. Now let's go back to the information I sent in. Actually, I can go right above here. The detail type is, in this instance, is going to be translate. We can also put sentiment there. Okay. For now, we're going to do translate. So it's going to say the detail type, this should be a translate. And the source should be text endpoint. Now this is just a source I, I put. I can, you can, so this is great because if you want to have multiple sources, hey, this came from mobile, this came from web, this came from an automated service, whatever. That's a great way to be able to delineate these and the rules down the line. Okay, and then finally I have to pass the event bus name and that's where I'll push to. Then I do, a, I do a push to event bus and then I just return with what I said, follows well, the data is received and here we got. If not, then we had an error. So that's a simple kind of look at the code uh, and, and how that works. All right, so let's go back to the template and apply that now. So I'm saying the source has to be from my text input. Now notice this is an array, so I can have multiple sources. I could say it could be from, from any one of these you know, seven things. The detail type has to equal translate. Same thing, this is an array, so I can do multiple ones. I really encourage you to read that blog if you wanna get into deeper filtering on, on EventBridge, and that'll, that'll explain a lot of this as well, but in the shortness of time, we're gonna, we're gonna move on a little bit here. So, all right. So now that we've got that set up, well, let's go ahead and deploy this again. So we're going to do a SAM deploy real quick. Okay. And that's going to push just the changes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to uh, run a log on that. So the idea here is you push a trend, you push a, some source. Let's go back to the source real quick so we can see it. You're going to push in what you want done the data you want it done to, and then the language. So here I'm gonna say, you know, we want this translated to Spanish, okay? So then what happens is the first Lambda is gonna take that um, and it's gonna push it directly into uh, EventBridge. Now let's pause for a moment. I've had a lot of requests on how do I talk to EventBridge directly with the API Gateway. And you certainly can do that. And I'll probably be showing that in my happy little APIs session in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it, that's that's a little bigger uh, task. Uh, or I might try to do it uh, in an upcoming session with Sam. Uh, I wanted to use the HTTP API, the new the new API, because it's, I really enjoy using that. So I can't directly connect to EventBridge. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm hitting API and I'm using a quick intermediary Lambda to take that and and push events into the EventBridge. Uh, but eventually, as we've talked about, HTTP API is going to have parity with uh, feature parity with REST API. So eventually, we'll be able to do an integration right into HTTP or right into uh, event bridge as well. So something to think about there. All right, so let's look and see if we are built. Um, let's scroll down here. Nope, still building out. So it takes uh, takes a little bit to build the filters. So again, back to explaining what's gonna happen. We post that to the HTTP API. It triggers a Lambda. That Lambda then inputs that event. It, 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 it uh, creates the event, and then it inputs that into event bridge. 
And then what's going to happen is that second lambda here is going to trigger based on uh, this information that we've got, and it's going to do some work. All right, so we now have that set up. So let's go back and let's run our, our post again. And then let's see if it's gonna work. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over here. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that second function, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, and let's, let's light this up so we have some stuff. It, it will time out after a while. So, so we're gonna go Sam, Sam, how's it going? Logs, okay? And then I'm gonna go, uh, again, uh, the uh, stack name, let's just put it in here. Uh, this is gonna actually be the translate function. So let's just retype that. Check my spelling, everybody checking my spelling. All righty. And then we're gonna do the EB. All right, so hopefully if all is gone here, my log group has been created. Now, one thing to notice, notice I ran the endpoint first, so the Lambda should have been triggered. Logs are not created when you create them with SAM until after the, the Lambda is triggered the first time. So it's kind of a, a just-in-time trigger and it creates the log. So it needs to run at least once. So let's see if it worked. And looky there. Okay, so we've got some information here, uh, and there's the translation. So I did get a translation from that. Welcome, bien, bienvenido uh, a session con. Yeah, I'm not even gonna. Yeah, that's that's embarrassing. I apologize, but our translation works. All right. I mean, you're like, okay, well, that's that's not a big deal. But I want to see them kind of differentiate. So we're gonna add now one more function. Okay, and this job's function is to look at the sentiment of a post. Okay, so a sentiment says, "Hey, are they happy? Are they sad? You know what's going on?" So let's let's tab this in here. Okay, and I'm I'm telling you what, I, I just want to scream on on the on the way these post in, not very well. All right, so now we have our sentiment function. Okay. Make sure it's in line. And again, he's he posts the handler. And I'll show you that code real quick so you can see it. He's just a simple, he uses comprehend uh, to do this. And then we you pass in a language code. This means what language getting, is getting passed in and the text. Uh, and then it'll actually send back to you a sentiment on it. Is this negative? Is this positive? Is it neutral? Okay. So looking at this couple things i need again i need a comprehend basics access policy now you might be asking about this over here in in most of these policies you need to pass a parameter but in some you don't but if you don't pass an empty uh, uh object it, it will hang on you so so pass an empty object uh and in, in and i'm using the json uh, notation right here in, in yaml and that works fine because an object would just be a blank line in yaml so i'm passing in this and so that that will pull up this comprehend basic access policy but again we don't we don't have a specific comprehend instance that we have access to it just says to comprehend this lambda can use comprehend all right so on this one this is my event bridge rule okay uh, i'm sorry this is my uh i have translate filter hang on it's like we need to rename that so this should be sentiment filter okay not a big deal but fixing code there all right, sentiment, sentiment, there we go, filter, all right, it's an event bridge rule, again, the same bus, this time, same endpoint, same source, but this time, the detail type needs to say sentiment, okay, so let's go ahead and push this, so all we're doing is we're going to push another function and create another rule, same bus, same API, well, the uh, you know, same bus, so, all right, so let's deploy that again, <laughs> Now you can use, uh, right now HTTP API is not supported in SAM local invoke, so that's why I'm not using a local version of this, but we deploy pretty quick, uh, so we'll do that. So now, while that's deploying, let's pop that up here. Let's go over to our console here, and we're obviously going to be doing a second one. Now again, I have to, I have to uh, run it before that will happen. And while I'm doing that, I'm looking to see if there's any questions I need to answer here. Uh, for more advanced, okay, yeah, I, I put that, all right. Uh, where is AWS? Um, we're, or, we're all over the place. War is AWS, okay. Interesting, that's cool, okay. All right, I don't see any questions going on here, so uh, let's move on here while this is, while this is filling out. And uh, we'll get that. So what we're going to do is once that's done, then I'll add the filter here. So this guy's still logging here. This guy's still doing the tail on that log. Uh, and then once we get this built out, this guy will then do that. 
And the filters take just a little bit longer. Uh, the rules can take just a little bit longer to build out. So we'll, uh, I could sing for you, but uh, you know, I could do stupid one finger tricks, ready? <sighs> That'll never make it to an official AWS channel, I think now that I've done that. So Chris Munns will be rolling his eyes. All right. Okay, sing. Now, Eric doesn't sing. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I was in a band, believe it or not, and uh, I'm a drummer. And uh, yes, that I know you're like, what? I was a drummer in college. Thought I was going to be a professional drummer. Turns out, here's the truth. I'm an amazing drummer for one finger. But as far as everything else, I'm pretty average. Nobody was going to pay me to do it. Hey, you're lucky. It's back up. It's running. So let's let's do this again. All right. Uh, I could sing you a song. That's all I got. All right. Here we go. Uh, moving back to our terminals here, or actually to Postman. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here, let me grab this endpoint. And I'm going to go here, all right. Oh, hey, I just posted really, really lots of stuff that shouldn't be there, hang on a sec. Sometimes copy paste is not, is not your friend. Okay, so we're gonna post that again. There we go, all right. So this time I'm gonna do is type sentiment, okay? And I am so upset by this whole thing, I'm also a little frightened. Okay, so we'll put that, all right? So I'm gonna send that once, and let's see if data is received. So, okay, we've got that, and actually let me show you the body, that's what I did. All right, so to go back to our monitor, so now we're gonna do Sam logs, and we'll just do this, and this one's my sentiment function, and we're gonna do EB, and let's see what we got here. Now notice, it did happen here. You can see where the API got it. Nothing triggered here, because that's not the rule for that. But here's our sentiment, and that was a negative sentiment. That was unhappy. So let's change that real quick. So we'll go over here, and we're gonna take the same URL, and we're gonna post it here. And I have a happier message. I'm so happy uh, about everything. Okay, about this whole thing, we're gonna send that. Okay, it went through, and let's go back to our, and we should see here in just a moment. Okay, uh, so first of all, you'll see it appear over here first. Uh, the, the, actually, sometimes with the logs will call, it, it won't happen first, but you'll see that in a minute. Oh yeah, there it is, I'm so happy. And over here, that is a positive sentiment. And there we go. So what we've done here, uh, so how does it process the language in negative, well, it uses machine learning. Uh, so it looks at that and there's a lot of, of uh, machine learning uh, that goes into that, that that boy, I couldn't even begin to explain to you. But that's what's cool about the service is the service is available to you. You don't have to understand, I don't have to understand that but part of it, but it can it can uh, evaluate the text and tell you whether it's positive or or you know or negative. So all righty. Uh, okay, let me have another question here. Uh, Julie, uh, let's see here. what okay. Hi Rob, is there a tutorial on how to implement JWT token for securing API gateway with Lambda authorizer or using? Yes, in fact, the last session of sessions with Sam, uh, we did that and I'm gonna put a link in here to our YouTube channel that actually has that on there. So look for episode two, where I talk about using a JWD token, I all, or JWT, and I also show how to customize that using Cognito and user groups. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, and with that, uh, you know, we're going to wrap up here. I really appreciate that, uh, you know, everybody's uh, watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you're looking for more, I encourage you to, in, in a half hour, to head on over to, to twitch.tv Rob Sutter, uh, where he'll be talking about EventBridge as the backbone. Uh, you can find me again. I'm going to post my Twitter here for you. You can find me on, on Twitter at EDJ Geek. Uh, which I'll post out there so you can find that. I'm open for questions. I like to help in any way I can. I love Sam. There's some great things coming. Uh, and so glad to help. And yeah, it's, it's you can call me whatever, <laughs> whatever you want. So, all right, apparently Siri just heard me and answered. So with that, I am out and thank you so much. Have a great day.